Welcome back. Uh, next, what I'm going to show you how to do is to uh, work with the assignments. So if I open uh, the course that I'm actually developing right now, Phys 225, I go to Form Grader, which is where you see all of the assignments as an instructor. So as an instructor, you use this Form Grader tab. Uh, and as in, in a later series of videos, I'll upload a whole series of assignments from last year's course. Uh, so you'll see that this actually gets populated with a whole list of assignments. Um, but for now, I'm going to use the demonstration one that comes within B Grader. And it's just called PS1. We can look in to see what PS1 has. It includes two different Jupyter notebooks, problem one and problem two. Uh, and, and these things are editable, right? This is actually where you create the assignment. You can see the model that they've done here for this demonstration assignment. Uh, you know, they've basically said um, part A, write a function that returns a list of numbers um, such that the ith number in the list is like i squared uh, for i between 1 and n. And uh, they, there's some starter code that comes with this function. In particular, the def statement was included, so when a student starts working on it, they're going to still see that def statement. But then the instructor is able to write a solution in here, and uh, and and that gets hidden. So anything that's between these uh, triple um, triple pound signs, begin solution and triple pound sign end solution, that stuff all gets hidden in the student version. Um, and then uh, and then these assert statements down here actually uh, run some test cases to make sure that the student's work is correct. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is that is kind of the basic logic of how an assignment is constructed. Uh, one thing that you're not seeing right now that's actually part of NB Grader is some additional information uh, that you'll see from the view menu. So because I this is a brand new Jupyter Hub server, by default the create assignments. Uh, view is not being shown. So uh, what we couldn't see before was that this was an auto graded answer cell, so a place where a student puts their answer, and then where the assert statements were, these like checks. Uh, this is the auto graded test, and then there's another auto graded test just checking for like you can't, um, uh, you know, it's supposed to throw an error if the input is out of bounds. Um, and so these these, if you pass the test, the student will automatically earn a point. If they fail, they get zero points. And so uh, that is, um, uh, that's how the auto grading works. All right, so let's actually, um, how, oh, I'll make one last comment, but not everything is auto graded in here. There are a couple parts of this, like here is a place that says like use LaTeX math notation to write out an equation for the sum of squares function. So trying to get people to learn how to use LaTeX within the, uh, within the Jupyter Notebook, and this is a manually graded answer. And so it's worth a point also, but how we actually grade it's going to be different. OK, so let's take a look to see what the cycle is like uh, for interacting um, with an assignment as an instructor. So the assignment has been created. Uh, I could have modified it, but I, I didn't. Uh, the next step is to generate a student version. And so what this does is it is uh, it generates a version which we can preview. And it is no longer in the source directory, but it is in Phys225 release. And release versions of the assignment cut out all the, all the instructor solutions. And they add this header where the student's supposed to put in uh, their name and collaborators. So for instance, uh, in this squares function that we were just looking at, there's no code there. All that stuff that was between the triple pound sign, uh, begin solution, triple pound sign, end solution, all that stuff's gone. In its place is this raise not implemented error. So if we don't put any code here, it's going to automatically know the student didn't even attempt it. It's going to just give him a zero. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the student version cuts out the solutions. Likewise, in part C, where there's the LaTeX math notation, everything that was in the answer markdown cell is hidden. And so uh, uh, it's just a blank cell that says your answer here. And that's where you type in the, the, the LaTeX. So, uh, so that's what it looks like. Now, if we go back to the form grader, um, so I can close those windows. If we go back to the, to the form grader, we can hit release now. And now once an assignment is released, what that means is a copy of it has been placed into the exchange directory. Uh, and um, for, from the student perspective, what they're gonna do is they're gonna go over to the assignments tab here. 
And whenever an assignment has been released, whatever assignments have been released, uh, those now, uh, when the student goes to the assignments tab, they say, aha, there's a released assignment. And I can, uh, it basically looks at the Exchange server to see what's there. And it says, there's one that I haven't grabbed yet, so I can fetch it. So now I'm acting like a student. Um, and so this is the student part. So they're going to click fetch. And now they're going to get their own version. This is a local version on their home directory of the server, which they can work on. This is, uh, it'll look like the release version, but it's, you know, each student's going to get their own. Uh, so I'll put my name in here, and um, I uh, am not going to do any of the rest of the assignment. Well, I'll, I'll put in one thing under Part C. I'll put in kind of a bogus LaTeX equation. Um, and uh, so that's going to render, um, and w uh, what we'll see is that actually shows up in the final solution. So I can save that. All right, so now if I, I say like, I've done the whole lab, I've done everything, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my solutions, I can, uh, I can check this validate, which at least runs the auto grader tests. I'm, I failed them, so that's not going to work so well because I didn't actually do the work. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and submit anyway. Uh, all right, so now under the form grader, so I'm going to go back into instructor mode. I have this option to collect assignments. So one has been submitted. I'm the only student actually doing anything right now. Uh, so there was one submission. And I can look at that submission. It was by a student with my username. It needs auto grading. So that's going to run through all these auto graded test cases. And I'm going to do terrible because I didn't do any of them. I successfully auto graded them and I got zeros. Um, I got a zero out of 13 really sad. Uh, and if, um, uh, yep. So uh, at this point, um, I'm not sure everything's going to work totally correctly. Uh, under manual grading, there is one submission. All right. So there is an assignment that needs manual grading. And um, let me do that. Okay, so you can see I actually put in the, the student version has um, the name Ben in there. So that's the thing that I had submitted. I didn't do part A. Um, I did do part C, though. So you should see my solution in here. Alpha equals 3, right? No credit. That's not what we were looking for. Um, and so the manual graded things, uh, which I didn't do very well. Uh, you can give full credit. You can give no credit. You can even give partial credit. Um, uh, just for submitting, you know. So, uh, all right. So there, uh, I earned 0.5 out of uh, 10 overall for that port, uh, for that particular notebook. Um, so yeah. So that's the process. There's auto grading, and then there's manual grading, and then uh, under manage uh, assignments, then there's a generate feedback. So this actually generates a a, a, a HTML version of the assignment. So uh, you can see that under your file structure. So now you've got directories for the source version that you created, the release version that students will be sent, uh, the submitted stuff that you collect from students, auto-graded copies of those same notebooks, and now a release version, which is an HTML file. So, uh, oh, sorry, not under release. Uh, I meant um, feedback, which is an HTML. So there'll be a directory for each student. Um, and if I look at the problem one, what I see is I got 0.5 out of the 10 possible points for that. Uh, and in fact, there were some, some comments. So the instructor can always put in comments. I didn't put a response in there, but this is a place for you to actually put in feedback. Uh, so that is, that is the process. And then, then to release that, all I have to do is, oops, sorry, got confused. Uh, all I have to do as the instructor is now release that feedback. And then that sends it out to the Exchange server. And now, as a student, I can fetch that. So I can fetch the feedback, and I can view the feedback. Um, 
and then I can just do the thing we just looked at. So, so, so this is really where NB grader shines is this ability to uh, both cycle quickly through the notebooks. So the auto grading can be helpful if you can make use of it in your class. I do about two thirds of my questions are auto graded, the other one third are manually graded. Um, uh, so, so the auto grading can save a ton of time if, if you can set that up in a sensible way. But even for manually graded assignments like a lab notebook or something, just this rapid ability to um, you know, send out the new assignment and collect it back and grade it and send the feedback without ever having to do any uploading from my courses or anything. Um, uh, uploading or downloading from my courses and opening things up on your local machine, it saves a lot of time uh, and it keeps things much better organized. So, uh, so that is the process and I'll leave it there and there'll be other videos that show other aspects of this whole process.